Hello everybody and welcome back to another Vintage Thursday. Um, so today we're going to make another video um, in our very very occasional series of kind of back to basics uh, beginner style maintenance on um, today we have a diesel Ferguson TEF20. So the purpose of today's little video as you've seen from the title we are going to adjust the clutch pedal free play. So it's important that you get it set right um, but it's not a common uh, adjustment you will make nowadays unless you're putting an awful lot of hours into your tractor. Um, when these were working full time, clutch wear um, occurs, you know, it's just a natural thing. Um, but today all we use these for is really is playing and uh, clutch wear isn't great, but you still need to keep an eye on um, the adjustment. So it's really simple on a Ferguson. Today's video will only cover uh, the Ferguson T20 range. Um, when they moved on to the dual clutches in the 35s, the FE 35s and onwards, um, it got very different so that won't apply you know today we're not covering anything newer than the t20 um, but all t20 models are the same so let's take a look at what we mean by clutch pedal free play okay so here's our clutch pedal so what we, the term free play um, relates to that little bit of movement there um, so what what you're aiming for or what, what you need to achieve for your free play um, is three eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters nowadays um, of, of movement before the clutch disengages. Um, and that measurement is taken up and under here between the top of the clutch pedal and the underside of that footrest mounting bolt. Um, now I've not measured this one, um, but I can tell it's not much. It's nearer a quarter of an inch than it is three-eighths of an inch so it's closer to six millimeters than ten so what we need to do um, is get a gap in here uh, of three-eighths of an inch before our clutch pedal disengages the drive which is up in here um, so it sounds quite daunting to get that um, gap set correctly uh, on our pedal but it's actually really easy with just three simple tools really so so when you bought your new Ferguson tractor in 1950, two, three, whatever, um, it came in the toolbox with a few items, one of which was the Ferguson spanner. Two different sizes on this spanner. Um, the two ends of this spanner will fit virtually every nut and bolt on this tractor. So, so that end fits many of the bolts that physically hold the tractor together. Your wheel nuts, front and back front hub cap which you would need to undo um, when you're setting your wheel bearings um, and when they were new not modern bolts are different but it would have it would have undone these nuts here um, it would have undone the original these are not really original bolts um, modern um, modern bolts have smaller nuts but the original Ferguson bolts had nut and bolt heads that were the same as this so you could theoretically um, adjust your track width just with the one spanner. So there is one other little trick a Ferguson spanner will do. So a lot of people will know this, but some of you won't. If for instance, you have something on the back of your tractor, we have here, too far a play. We teach you a little trick. So if you put the linkage, linkage lever into maximum lift, engine clearly not running, you unscrew your PTO cap, um, you will notice, so again some people will know this, the original PTO shaft on a Ferguson tractor is smaller than standard size. PTO shaft diameter of a T20 is one and one eighth of an inch. Um, the industry standard became one and three eighths of an inch. Um, they actually upgraded to, to standard size on the 35, but the T20s had the small shaft. So the Ferguson spanner will fit a standard size PTO shaft look and what you can do with the lift lever in raise and the PTO selector lever here in neutral what you can do put your spanner on you can either do a full turn or you can rock it backwards and forwards and the plow will raise okay so we'll just rock the spanner backwards and forwards And 
and now you see we can raise the plow or you can raise so you can raise the linkage with no engine just with your Ferguson spanner so I will just put the lever back down again but if you follow me on Instagram which you should be doing you will see a few weeks back um, I put a picture of this very Ferguson spanner uh, on Instagram so the picture showed me filling the 5712 modern tractor with a bit of back end oil um, I used this spanner to slacken the, the filler bung and um, so the same spanner opens the filler bung on this tractor as opens the filler bung on the modern stuff so there you go interesting interesting things right anyway let's get on with the subject in hand and adjust our clutch part of adjusting the clutch that a lot of people worry about is getting that precise measurement um, between the top of our pedal and underneath of the under and the underside of our mountain you know the foot peg mountain bolt um, so the easiest way to do that or to get that measured is to use a nut okay so an m6 nut is 10 millimeters across the flat so you need a 10 millimeter spanner to undo an m6 nut so we can use that as our spacer to give us the correct measurement so to do the clutch adjustment it's easier to have two spanners so we're going to use our ferguson spanner and just another standard 11 16 spanner so the first operation to do is undo the pinch bolt and then then it will all fall to pieces because we will let off the spring tension okay so there it is we've lost so this shaft spun and the pedal dropped hit the foot plate so what we need to do now is trap our nut on top of our pedal and as you can see it doesn't really want to stay there but there's a handy little trick I will show you. So what we do, we take a piece of string, we tie it around the pedal. We take our nut, put it in the right place so that it's trapped on the underside of this mountain bolt in there. Then we tie the string around the steering wheel. Okay, so now our pedal is set with the correct gap under there. Then we take our spanners. So we take one spanner onto the end of the clutch shaft with a squared, this is a square end. And then we turn it clockwise until we meet resistance. I'm not going to get a spanner on the bottom there, so I've got to try again. Okay, there we go, we've got it now. I'll make sure we don't block our access to the nut. So we've turned our clutch shaft clockwise until it meets resistance, and then we just do up the pinch bolt tight as we can this does have to be really quite tight just to make sure we're clamping tight on that clutch shaft okay that's tight and that's it all we do Under our string now our nut is held there by the pressure of the clutch springs just give it a little poke down get the nut out and that is it it is as simple as that we now have the correct so we now have the correct measurement 
of three eighths of an inch of free play between the top of our pedal and the underside of the mounting bolt. Take your string off and that is it. It really is that simple. Just that, tent, that, that little nut and the string holding the pedal up against the steering wheel it just saves you so many you know two hands trying to get that gap right it's just a simple little trick that somebody told me years and years ago um, if you remember that you know you can't go wrong so there we go that, that, that's it. it you know that that is the end of the video it is as easy as that just to keep a it's just something to keep you need to keep on top of it and it is one of the easiest things you can do nothing to be frightened of have a go go and do it on your tractor so there we go that is the end of the video already um, it's almost like we barely got started but never mind right for the end of the video I am going to put a link over here what I would like you to do is go and watch uh, Massey Man our friend from YouTube um, he's been enjoying the 550 club um, and so he's introduced us to his new tractor um, he's bought himself a nice little 550 so go and watch that here go and subscribe as well to him um, and I will say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.